and it's running MAME. You know, it's not okay. So I think we're back on the air. All right, let's see if my little mouse thing is working. My little mouse thing is working. All right. So hopefully we'll be back on uh, the YouTube screen here in just a second. All right, so for those of you who um, were here, maybe you'll come back. Uh, so we had a few people in the chat. Uh, Big West Purdue is here. Rick Adams had stopped by. Uh, Curtis Boyle was here in the chat. And um, who else was in the chat? Michael Brandt was in the chat. Rick Adams, um, Mr. Drifter NL was here, Paco Otake, Curtis Bo, I think we've covered everybody who was in the chat. And now my screen says video playback is interrupted. I don't know why. Let's get that freaking thing open again. Let me refresh my browser. Uh, am I live? Am I live? We'll do it live. Yes, we're live. Okay. So real quick, I'll just show you a picture of again what we're doing. This is a brand new Raspberry Pi. Just came in the mail today. It's the Raspberry Pi 3. It came with a little kit that has the little power brick for it to power it up. It also came with a couple of these two little heat sink doodaddies that I will sink to the heat later. Um, and then uh, a good friend sent us the um, Raspberry Pi Retro Pi micro SD card. So I was sent the micro SD card. So if you're asking me, dude, how do you set up Raspberry Pi? Dude, how do you set up Retro Pi? I don't know. I have no freaking idea, but we'll find out. In the meantime, uh, this is not about setting it up. It's more like about, like, dude, let's just take a look at it, right? So um, that's what we're doing right now. So as soon as this thing gets off my screen here, I'm going to switch back over. Damn it. Go away, dude. Get off of my... I'm trying to switch scenes here in my XSplit, and my computer's got so many pop-ups right now, I can't even switch over. Okay, here we go. We're switching back now. So what system should I look at now? We were looking at, I don't know what the hell we we're looking at. I forgot. My internet died, which is why. Um, hey, Megan, what is this? I'm looking Joust. at. Joust. Joust. On what system? On the arcade or on 7, what? 7800. You want me to look at Joust on the Atari 7800? Okay. So we're going to do that. And then I think uh, Curtis wanted Gauntlet in one of the systems Gauntlet earlier. Gauntlet 2 on the arcade, I think. And then you okay. have to the Donkey Kong Remix, right? Yeah, we'll look for Donkey Kong Remix. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's Joust. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's not too no, bad. This is not bad. Multicolored sprites. Speed is good on it. I'd have to say it certainly looks like it responds better than the the first version I saw on the Coco Two. Oh, what buzzard bait? <laughs> Yeah, the pretty good actually. Yeah, buzzer bait is pretty good. The, the colors are colors are pretty true to the arcade. I should probably turn up the volume a little bit on this one, but it seems it varies by game because um, I had to turn the volume down on one of the systems because it was just too freaking loud in my ears. Hello, Megan Minecraft. My daughter's giving me a hundred emojis in the chat right now. Thank you for the emojis, Megan. You're welcome to walk over here 20 feet and, and see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm killing dudes. Yeah, this is good. So I do have a real Atari 7800, but I don't have this cartridge. So it's nice to be able to um, play some of the games you don't have. And Actually, could... this would be, for me, this would probably be a game. If I had the 7800, I would probably try to acquire the... The cartridge? The cartridge. Yeah, because I a always fan of Joust. Joust. Yeah, me too. I, I was a fan of Joust. There's the unbeatable pterodactyl. Beware of the unbeatable pterodactyl. Alright. Yeah, now on this one here, the sound effects serve the game pretty well. The Atari 7800 has got basically the same crappy sound as the 2600, but the, the flapping noises are fine. The like collision noises are fine, so. Well, uh, didn't weren't there certain uh, 7800 cartridges that added extra hardware in the cartridge to compensate for that? You know, I honestly, I there I could, only like one or two. I was gonna say I couldn't tell you because I wasn't even familiar with this system when it was out. I only learned about this system like about a year ago, so I didn't even know about it. But I mean, I have one, and what what I do like about it is that it's. This is technically, my 7800 is the first Atari console I've ever owned, because I never owned an Atari system. Um, and it is completely compatible with the 2600 cartridges. The cartridge slot is the same. Um, uh, Curtis says, what happened to the original stream? My internet spontaneously froze on me, Curtis. I don't know what happened. I had to reboot my router. 
All right. So that was Joust. What's what's the next thing we're gonna look at? Uh, he Gauntlet two. I think he wanted to see on Mame. Man. Okay. So we're gonna go down to the G's. Gauntlet. Oh, let's go back for just a second. Um, where Donkey Kong is. Okay. So I've got Donkey Kong. Three. Donkey Kong Jr. I don't even see Donkey Kong 1 in here. Alright, so I'm going to look for Gauntlet 2. Galaga. Gauntlet 2. There we go. And I like how it has the artwork for it. That's kind of cool. Gauntlet 2B not found. Oh, don't you love that? And you get a whole bunch of error messages that the emulator can't find something. <laughs> Where's the quality control on this image? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, sound is good. See if this almost makes me want to play the current gauntlet with you. <laughs> yeah, right? I have to re-download it again, yeah. Um, Alright, so is, how do I insert a coin? Oh, and then I get to pick who I want to be. So if I want to be Elf. Oh, collect magic potions before doing that. Yeah, cool. An improved version of... There's my shots. Oh, I am Elf. It's just I'm not used to the Elf being red. That's what confused me. I always thought Elf was green. Uh, maybe that was a feature of Gauntlet 2 where you could have more than one person play the same character. Yeah. And so they were just kind of color-coded. Yeah, I, I don't even remember playing Gauntlet 2 that much myself. All right, we'll take the wimpy way out. Yeah, no, it's good. This is uh, this runs MAME pretty well. Oh. Yeah, I would recommend, Steve, since uh, you are running... Mame, and you are running the Pi Three without a heat sink. You probably should add <laughs> the heat sink. Add the heat sink. Yeah, because the Pi Three is notori notoriously known for running hot. Okay. So well, that's good to know. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll wait for it to cool down when I do that. I might even, you know, read the instruction manuals in the proper way to do that. You have to wait for these things to stop glowing before you cross them, right? All right. That's cool. What else should we look at? Let's look at a platform I'm not as familiar with. Sega uh, Master what System. The, what was the PC uh, platform? The PC platform? Oh, the PC Engine? Yeah, that's it, yeah. PC Engine is also known as Turbo Graphics 16. So this is kind of a better than NES. Uh, Devil's Crush, if that's on there. Devil's Crush? All right, let's see. That's a pinball machine. Uh, pinball oh, is game. it? Interesting. Devil's Crash. Is that it? Um, well, Curtis no. said Devil's Crush, but... I don't know what Crash is. But Crush was a pinball game. Yeah. Well, it is called Devil's Crush, but the ROM was named Devil's Crash. Okay. Password. Okay, what are my controls here? Whatever. It's actually a decent palette set. Oh, you're probably pressing the tilt, uh, the yeah, the, the tilt button. Some other button probably uh, does the plunger. It's like Curtis it's... is giving you the history. <laughs> All right, uh, there's only one button that's recognized in this, and it's the or A button. And if I do a the D pad, I don't know. You have to hold something down. I'm trying that, but you do it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's pause. I'm trying D pad in different directions. Oh, I have to hold down two buttons at the same time. Hmm. What's my left bumper? I don't know what my left bumper is. Okay. 
turbo on, turbo off, turbo off. I don't know what the Steve, left. Steve likes it twisted, Curtis. <laughs> I don't. Okay, it's okay. So the that that's the deal there. I have to press down on the D-pad for the other bumper. I don't even. Know, I don't even know what my controls are. You know. Oh, this is cool. You're using a pinball to fight like uh, sprite demons here, like sprite bosses. That's kind of cool. It's like you know integrating raster games and. Uh, Fighting a boss with a pinball, that's pretty cool. It's like mixing the genres. That's neat. Yeah, this is a neat system. Impressive. It's better than the NES for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the sound is much better, the color palette a heck of a lot better, the speed seems to be pretty nice too. You know what it was? I think one of these buttons was set to turbo because when you press like buttons X and Y it toggles a turbo setting on some of the buttons so I think when I was trying to pull it down goes. on the lever it was like rapid fire mode or something. Yeah this is neat. What had a good dungeon crawl game? I can't remember the name of it. Well, what good are you, Curtis? Go back to work. <laughs> this is neat. Man, it's just like... You know, and I, I guess it's so weird what when I finally get interested in something. Because, yeah, sure, could I have been playing this on an emulator on my computer all along? Yes, but would I have spontaneously just decided to emulate the uh, PC Engine system? Probably not because I'm not familiar with it, but now that I have it here and I'm looking at it, I'm like, wow, this is cool. This is like um, neat things to try that I never would have tried, you know? Curtis says Dungeon Explorer, maybe. Dungeon Explorer on the same system? On this system? I don't know. He hasn't said. Okay. Double Dungeons. Let's try that. We'll try double dungeons. Errors are logged to the um, dev slash something or another. Okay. Dungeon Explorer, maybe? So is it starting or is it not starting? I'm guessing it doesn't like that one. Reset. Okay. Well, we'll go back. Dungeon Explorer. There you go, Curtis. Dungeon Explorer. Press a fire button to configure. USB gamepad. Alright, so I don't know if I'm just not patient enough or if I'm... Okay, that's turbo. Player one button. Turbo on. Turbo off. I'm not getting anything, so I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong right now. All right, so we got to go back. All right, uh, let's just find a different game. Maybe like if it doesn't show the artwork, maybe it's not going to work. Uh, all right, that was Atari 2600, Atari 7800. Hmm. ColecoVision. Let me find an obscure game on the ColecoVision. I wonder what Congo Bongo looks like on the ColecoVision. Pretty terrible. <laughs> <laughs> see this is what i don't like about this though there's no artifacting i like you know i i like looking at my ColecoVision through my analog capture where i see the artifacting and also i see the, all the analog imperfections um rainbow around everything yep. yeah yeah pretty terrible interesting This game almost reminds me of Guanabuana. Well, I suspected that Guanabuana was inspired by this, but I think Mark Siegel says, no, this was an original game that I thought <laughs> of, but well, I don't you know. Well, can it this way. Uh, Zaxxon runs on the exact same hardware as uh, Congo Bongo. Mm-hmm. 
made by the same programming team in the arcade. Uh huh. So Steve did Zach's song, and then he made Guana Buana. But it's an uh, original game. Yeah, but <laughs> he did it right after Zach's song, using the same engine. Yeah. Which is what this game is. It's using the same <laughs> prepared as Zach's song. <laughs> you can even see the diagonal, uh, you know, the, the way the screen's laid out. Yeah. Like Zach's song. Ooh, Defender. Let's see what Defender looks like. Another good game. Right. Whether or not it is on this platform, we'll see. Atari Soft. The one thing I'm realizing too about um Okay. No, this is actually pretty good. This game is a little bit impressive on a Coleco because it has a scrolling background and yeah. uh, the Coleco does not support scrolling backgrounds. So there's some magic trickery going on here. Um. Well, don't doesn't support scrolling backgrounds, but there were plenty of games that scrolled. But what was that just like tile-based scrolling? Yeah, they scrolled by by large uh, eight eight pixel uh, increments, and this one's smooth scrolling. Yeah, yeah, and There's not only that, but it looks it looks to be somewhat parallax because the stars are not moving at the same speed as the uh, terrain is. Yeah, so whoever programmed this, uh, he knew how to pull off tricks. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder if it was like, would it be where you had the sprites, where you were switching the sprites at the right point? I think in this case, because the background looks a little uh, strange with missing pixels every now and then, I think what they did was maybe draw a whole bunch of uh, tiles, uh, the background tiles, offset from one another, so they're switching between different sets of tiles to compose the graphics. Okay. Um, so, you know, instead of actually scrolling, it's switching to a slightly different set of graphics where all okay. the pixels are offset by one. So it's using, you know, probably all of its available graphic styles to move that simple background because they have to repeat each one eight times or something. Hmm. Interesting. Frogger. I'm familiar with Frogger. A lot of games in here, though, right? So we got a lot of ColecoVision games. Moon Patrol. Let's see what this one looks like. Mat Patrol. Well, did I did I hallucinate and thought I saw Moon Patrol? Uh, it's a bootleg. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if the guy's name was Matt who did it. It's got the music. And smooth scrolling. Interesting. And... Um, You're dead. Somewhat parallaxing in the sense that... Um, okay, so that's jump. I can push up to jump too. Well, not, not at this time. Um, Sooner, Steve. Sooner! <laughs> yeah, right. I like that the wheels actually adjust to the terrain too, you know? This is halfway decent. I was going to say, it's it, it's kind of parallaxing, but it there's where it's scrolling is all in the smooth blue. So um, it doesn't have to like mask the different layers against each other. Okay, the bad guys are now coming out. This is not bad though. And another thing that I found a little bit annoying about a lot of ColecoVision games is you had a lot of these single color sprites. Which, so it's just basically like... A higher resolution version of the 2600 is what a lot of these things look like. Um, but this is good that the uh, buggy's multicolored. Uh, these bad guys here are single color sprites, but yeah, not bad. This might be a, a more modern homebrew version. Yeah. Where the guy has access to more technology than the original version might have had. Okay. Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. I'm not familiar with those things at all. Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh, these are good games here. Like, oh, dude, I didn't do that. Okay, Mega Drive. Let's see what some of our favorite Sega games are in here. Another World, great game. Like Another World and Flashback. Uh, Beavis and Butthead. That's funny. That's so. That's just a sign of the times when you've got a console version of Beavis and Butthead, right? Here's a Castlevania: The New Generation on um, 
on this system here. Let's see what it looks. Let's see what this guy looks like. We looked at another Castlevania on the Super NES. Let's kind of contrast and com compare here. Castlevania Bloodlines, 1994. This was my favorite console. Was the Genesis? Yeah, there was a nice RGB mod for the Genesis. The first generation Genesis actually had a um, RGB output for it. And I think it was like, uh, you know, for like a CGA and EGA eras before VGA and stuff. Uh, press start button. Okay, one player start. John Morris or Eric Lagarde? Oh, Eric looks good. He's got a long staff. All right. What are my buttons? And the sound is stereo. So I'm hearing the sound in both speakers. Which is good. Pick this crap up. Yeah, this apparently this is a thing in Castlevania, huh? Climbing stairs? <laughs> Because the other one had this too. Yep. Castlevania 2, you had to um, traverse a lot of stairs. Why is my stream buffering right now? You guys are still on the call, right? So hopefully I haven't lost my internet again. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, but the, yeah, the video for us is getting a little laggish. And just came back. Doesn't help when you've got this... um, people watching Netflix and YouTube and everything else in the same house too, you know? Well, that's true for the download from your point, but that Netflix streaming shouldn't affect your upload hardly right. at all. All right, so we got Mega Drive Neo Geo. Let's see what we got here. Double Dragon on the Neo Geo. This is basically... Now, is this Neo Geo Arcade, or is this the Neo Geo home console system, I wonder? That would be the home console, but it's essentially the same thing as the arcade hardware. Same arcade hardware, huh? Yeah, it certainly looks like it. Yeah, this is in stereo. Yeah, that was like the most expensive console ever at the time. That is some impressive graphics for the time frame. Billy versus Emon. Billy, what the hell? Yeah. Oh wow, this is who I'm fighting. I'm fighting on a plane, huh? Oh, I love how this thing scrolls and everything too. It like zooms in and zooms out. You got a zoom level going on. This is a cool fighter. Man, I'm loving this crap. Curtis says Moon Patrol was one of his favorite games in the in the arcade. Yeah, I like Moon Patrol. It was a pretty interesting. It was a, just a different spin on the traditional space shooter. And I like the uh, fact that you kind of had these goals you had to reach and reach like you know different checkpoints and landmarks i like that the scenery the background scenery changed sometimes you had buildings sometimes you had um mountains um you had the boulders that chased you and the downhill boulders that happened every now and then a lot of, a lot of uh, variety in that game yeah this neo geo system is pretty cool it's hard to believe that all this stuff is emulating this well on that little Raspberry Pi, man. It's such a small little box. And now Curtis is bragging. I was regularly able to make it to the second expert course. <laughs> Good for you! <laughs> you guys still there? I'm, and now I'm getting a message that I'm getting drop frames, and that was the same message I got right before I lost my internet last time. You well, just, just at least there. for us, if, if, if you vanish, we'll know, because Skype will kick you out of the group. 
Yeah. <laughs> Your performance is very poor. I am too strong. I love those taunts at the end of the game, huh? Yeah, I'm not crazy about this Super NES controller in general. Um, see, like right now, it just started um, moving on its own. You, to be Ooh, honest, there's... you can actually set up with the RetroPie, because I've done this. You can set up the Xbox 360 controller, the wired version. Um, you can use the Xbox One controller on it. Yeah, um, I, well, that's, I would probably I, just want to use my um, my ta my X Arcade Tank stick. I've got the actual arcade stick, you know. Um, what if it works for you? <laughs> outrun. Yeah, I'm getting drop frames detected, and I see buffering on my YouTube feed right now. Uh, we'll see. Now, this is interesting that Sega made this game here for them. This is outrun from Sega on this system. This must have been before they had made the Genesis, because why would they? Why would they have their game on a competing on a competing console? You know. Turbo Graphics 16. Oh, maybe it's not. It's it's just a it's not a game. It's just a screensaver. Never mind. I was duped. Cool. Outrun one. Let's try that one. Press a button to configure errors or log. Okay, here we go. Game start. Okay. <laughs> Curtis says that the uh, outrun on the CGA PC was one of the ugliest games he ever saw. Alright. What are my buttons? Okay. This is pretty good. Actually, one of the, the racing games that was similar to this that I liked was, uh, what was it, Cruising USA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a much newer game. I think that was on the N64? Yeah. Can I switch gears? No, that's brakes. Is that my highest speed? Up and down, maybe. Yeah, that's that switches between low and high. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, down on the D-pad, switch to high gear. Yeah, this is pretty good. I'm surprised that Sega made a game for a competing system. There must not have been competition at the time. Okay, so this is low gear. Once I get to like 100 miles an hour or so, I should switch into high, right? Just like regular driving. All right. <laughs> Just like that, huh? <laughs> you mean I've been doing it wrong this whole time? <laughs> oh, that, that explains our conversations while you've been driving. Yes, pack land. <laughs> Let's try pack land. I like this little system here. This looks just like the arcade. It's a pretty impressive uh, console. I gotta figure out what all my buttons are, so I have to push up on the stick to jump. I'm not crazy about the key mappings here. That I'd ha that I'd want to probably remap once I figured that out. Okay. Okay, so you have to hold down the jump button and then you hold down the run button and then just jump, basically, I guess, huh? Alright. I got a power pill. Not bad. Getting drop frames detected again. All good things come to an end. Alright. Neat. All right, well, I could sit here and do this all day. <laughs> simple things for simple minds. Um, what were some of the other cool Super Nintendo games? I don't even know. I didn't really own a Super Nintendo. Uh, I'm going to get going. All right, Sockmaster, thanks for stopping by, man. Sure. 
Let me see. All right, so I'm touching the chip on my Raspberry Pi, and my skin's still on the tip of my finger, so it's not terrible. Um, Mario's Early Years, Mario's Time Machine, Mario's Magic Football, uh, Mario's the Missing. Super. If, yeah. if you're wanting the regular uh, Mario stuff, it would be in the S. Prince of Persia. Oh, neat. Robocop, Robocop 3. ton of stuff in here. Spider-Man, Spider-Man and Venom. Star Fox. That was interesting, right? Street Fighters. Those were good. Star Wait, was there a Star Trek The Next Generation? Was that right? Mm, I don't know. Stargate. Star Trek The Next Generation yeah. Futures Past. Want to see that? Yeah. I've never okay, even... Okay, so here we look at this. There was... There's also Deep Space Nine, dude. Holy Crossroads crud. in Time. Uh, there's Starfleet Academy. Uh, Bridge Simulator. The next generation futures past. There's a guy got a Stargate game too, dude. Wow, it's like sci-fi geek heaven right here, right? Uh, which one should I pull huh. up? Uh, next gen. Next generation. All right. You want me to share audio so you can hear it? Um, sure. If your bandwidth will allow. <laughs> Which call are we on right now? It's not that loud. Grant, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. I wasn't sure. You were kind of quiet. I think, I think what needs to happen is that each of these emulators probably has its own volume setting. And I'd probably have to mess with each one of them, you know? Well, actually, the music is just about the right thing, so that because I prefer hearing you over the game audio anyway, because you don't want the game audio being too overpowering. Press start. Captain's log. The Enterprise is currently patrolling a region near the Romulan neutral zone. Romulan High Command claims a team of their researchers vanished into the neutral zone over a month ago. Starfleet offered to assist as a sign of goodwill, but the Romulans declined, citing security reasons. Three days ago, they asked for permission to enter the neutral zone and conduct uh, their own research. Of course, Starfleet refused such a one-sided breach, given the sensitive nature of this area. The Enterprise has been sent to monitor the Romulans' activity. All right, very cool. We're back. I keep my, my internet's my internet's acting up on me, West Purdue. Communications. Oh, look at this. Transporter room. There's Deanna. <laughs> Engineering. There's Wharf. Computers. Sensors. We've got number one. Briefing room. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Okay, communications. There's Mr. Data. Oh, look at this. Hi, I'm whatever. Okay. Really confusing. That's gonna take a lot of time to figure that game out. All right, Street Fighter Alpha. Let's go. Let's get into the supers, right? So Super Adventure Island. Uh, so, uh, so everything on the Super Nintendo started with Super, right? So uh, Super Buster, Super Castlevania. Wow. So we got some of those. Super Double Dragon. <laughs> oh, Curtis. What is Sir Curtis saying? He says, is your pie downloading a massive update? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, if it was downloading, it still wouldn't affect his upload. <laughs> he must have Much. Comcast or something. Super Godzilla. Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World. Super Mario Kart. Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Super off road, super so uh, super punch out, hmm. Uh, super slam shot, super super Star Wars. Ooh, I used to love all those things, the Star Wars games. This was a cool game. Mm. Uh, I didn't see Mario One in there, but that, that's easy to drop ROMs into this thing, I'm sure. Nintendo presents. In stereo. 
<laughs> Super Star Wars. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, this this was an utterly impressive game when it first came out. I remember a um, friend, friend of mine had a Super Nintendo. We actually rented this cartridge from Blockbuster or something just to play it for a weekend. I got a feeling you're going to be having YouTube do a lot of removing. I don't know that they're going to flag this because it's synthesized. What are my the buttons? Heck? God, this is a good game. What's my jump button? Die, scorpion scumbag. West, I didn't even know there was a comic series for the Coco. Oh, the Whiz Kids. Yeah, they were the comic books that you can get on the Radio Shack stores. The TRS-80 Whiz Kids. Those guys were around since before. Uh, even the, in the black and white TRS-80s, they were around. It was a way to make computers cool, but putting them in a comic book. Cool, man. Now, the emulation's good. This, this looks and plays like the original system. This is cool. What else we got in here? We got so much stuff in here. Super Nintendo, Atari 2600, Atari 7800, ColecoVision, see now my joystick's moving on its own. Game Gear, I don't know what the hell the Game Gear is. Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, these were, um, okay, MAME, bunch of stuff on MAME. Let's go back to MAME for a second. Stop moving, dude. Like the joystick is um, moving on its own. Is it the controller or is it something sitting on the keyboard? No, it's not, well, I don't know what it is. Man, all right, so let's go up. We got some Wizards of War, that's cool. War of Arrow. I wonder what version of MAME it is, too. And you got because you gotta make sure the ROMs match the version if you wanna update it. Triple Punch, Time Pilot, that's a cool game, all right? Too bad there's not a way to not see that little DOS looking screen when it switches between them. Yeah, neat. So which one's my fire button? Yeah, it's like different, different buttons are different on different systems. <laughs> Wes Purdue says if it wasn't for the WizKids I'd probably be some smoking hippie. <laughs> some, some pot smoking hippie on the Atari ST. The whiz kids kept you clean and sober, huh? Kept you straight. <laughs> Stay in school like the whiz kids and solve crime with your TRS-80 systems. <laughs> yeah, neat. I mean, I could play with this thing all day. Uh, this is neat. Time pilot. That'd be a good clone for uh, Nick to do. Time pilot? Yeah. Yeah. Mega Drive, Neo Geo. See, now it's just like it starts moving on its own when I'm not telling it to. Okay. A lot of games on Neo Geo I have to play with Nintendo. Of course, we all know and love Nintendo. Um, so what would be a good uh, joystick for this uh, Raspberry Pi? Well, it's USB. You can use anything. Um... I myself prefer the PlayStation 4 controllers, but it's kind of up to whatever you would prefer. What I want to look at real quick, too, is how is this thing going to mount in my case? Are there Especially screws? if it's got a heating problem. Um, well, they designed the case for it. So there's four holes here. And these now I'm just wondering. I'm, I'll probably have to reach out to Glenn Hewlett to figure out what he how he recommends this gets mounted. Um, what's the, what's the proper way to shut this thing down? 
Um, there should be a menu option in RetroPie to shut it down. Okay. So, and then um, with the Pi, when it actually gets to the shutdown phase, there will be a green LED next to the red one that will start flashing. It'll flash like five or six times. And once it stops flashing continuously for like that five, six times, mm -hmm. then it's done. It's ready okay. for you to pull okay. the power. So at this point now, it's shutting down. Um, I'm going to wait for the, okay, so that flashing light is gone right now, so the only light that's on right now is a single red light that probably means I have power, right? Yes. Okay, so now I can pull the power. Okay. Yep. So Johnny is going to disassemble number five right now. No disassemble, Johnny number five. Uh, too late. Okay, let's see what the kit here says I need to do. Showing me the pieces. Um... Uh, if you want to have a case, if you want to, if it tells you how to set up the noobs operating system, Raspberry Pi, Jesse shutting down the Raspberry Pi, Wi-Fi configurations. Um, none of these instructions here tell me how to deal with the um, heat sink. Or what's it? I love that the Raspberry Pi came with this little brown paper bag like that. That's kind of cool. It looks like a little, like lunch bag or grocery bag or something. Um, I'm going to guess that you just peel off the stickers and snap these things on. Yes. Now, the obviously, the bigger of the heat sinks goes on the CPU. And the smaller heat sink goes on the little USB hub Ethernet controller that's, that's behind that the is? USB. Okay. All right. Yeah, so then I just, I, I guess I want to figure, I'm going to go ahead and try to slide it into the Coco case just to get an idea where it goes. Um, and then I just got to figure out how do you mount it, because it almost looks like you might need some little poles or something for that. Okay, so there's heat sink number one. Firmly oppressed. You're um, good at oppressing, aren't you? Yeah, especially if your name is <laughs> David Ladd. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> All right. So the heat sinks have been oppressed upon it. So here's my here's my cocoa pie case. And I'm assuming this, yeah, because you kind of just want this to slide in here where you can see the USB ports. Yes. Although, unless the way it tapers, I don't even know how the hell this thing would fit in here. Yeah, the person that made the case would probably have a better idea. Now, here's my other concern, is that I, if I jimmy this thing in here, then we got to come in from the side. Yeah, okay. Kind of come in from the side. Um, yeah, because I want to make sure I've got access. It looks like if I have it in here, I'll have access to everything. Um, here we go. It's kind of in there now. Even without screws, it's kind of in there. But yeah, I guess I would want to just figure out how to screw it. Um, that's what she said. And uh, <laughs> So yeah, it kind of lines up now. So the back of the Cocoa Pie here, you can see the USB ports and um, the Ethernet adapter. And then on the belly of the beast here, we can get to the SD card. And then I just need to see, okay, so then HDMI and power would come out the side kind of right here. It's kind of hard to see, but here's where you gain access to your HDMI and power leads. And I guess we could run cables through the back here to plug yep. into that. Um, so, so yeah, I'll just ask him if there were, if you just screw straight through to the motherboard holes or if there's anything else he recommends to properly mount this. Um... Who made that? Uh, Glenn Hewlett. Same guy who did the Pac-Man transcode. So this will be the case for my Raspberry Pi. And then, um, yeah. Yeah, man, I like it. And so the next thing I'm looking to try out is the um, Cocoa Pi. And so I'm going to lean on Ron Klein a little bit to get the latest, greatest image of that and mess around with that. All right. Yeah, I don't know why I'm buffering so much. So, all right. Well, we're going to end the stream. So, thank you, Grant, and thank you, David Ladd, and thank you, 
Um, big West Purdue for coming by and Curtis Boyle for being here. And uh, who else was here? Sock Maybe Minecraft. Master. Sock Master was here earlier too. Uh, Rick Adams came by a minute ago. All right. So, yeah, weird stuff going on with my internet and my streaming right now. I don't know what to tell you, but it is what it is. And it was what it was. And now it is no more. So, goodbye. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, don't forget to brush your teeth, eat your vegetables, say your prayers, go to school, say no to drugs, all that good stuff, boys and girls. Okay, um, we'll see you next time. Peace out and bye-bye.